President Ulysses S. Grant has an interesting story about the S in the middle of his name. He was seeking admission to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. When his congressman nominated him, he mistakenly wrote Ulysses S. Grant on the application, presumably because Grant's mother's maiden name was Simpson. Although Grant later tried to correct the mistake, West Point would not change its records. When Grant ultimately received his diploma with the errant S on it, he therefore resigned himself ever after to signing his name with the S. President Truman's parents gave him the middle name of S after they couldn't agree on a middle name as a tribute to relatives whose names both started with the letter S. Officially, the S is followed by a period, Harry S. period Truman. That's because Truman used a period with the letter S in his correspondence. Well, on a hunting trip in Mississippi, guides had arranged for President Theodore Roosevelt to shoot an old bear that they had tied to a tree. Roosevelt refused. He refused on sporting grounds. The situation actually became a newspaper cartoon, which then inspired a shopkeeper to sell stuffed bears, with Roosevelt's permission, of course. Legend has it this is the root of the name teddy bear associated with the stuffed animal. President Teddy Roosevelt was also an avid boxer. Even when he became president of the United States, he did not give up the sport. When Roosevelt boxed, he liked to have either young aides or army officers come to the White House and go several rounds with him in the ring. In one time, in 1905, an army artillery officer named Captain Daniel Meade got a punch through President Roosevelt's defenses and clocked him in the face so hard that it wound up causing a burst in the vessels of his left eye and possibly detached his retina in the process. Theodore Roosevelt didn't give up at that point, though. He was also training the same type of old-style jiu-jitsu, judo and jiu-jitsu that the first Gracies learned in Brazil from Mitsuyo Maeda, who was passing by the U.S. on his way to Japan. Back in the early days, he was taught by Yamashita Yoshiaki, the pioneer of judo in the U.S., and a direct student of Jigaro Kano. President Roosevelt trained jiu-jitsu to lose 20 pounds prior to an election, and he became so good at it, he never stopped. Did you know that three of the nation's founding fathers, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and James Monroe, they all passed away on Independence Day? President Adams and President Jefferson passed away on the same exact day, but not at the same place. They left this world July 4th, 1826, which happened to be the 50th anniversary of the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. President Monroe died five years later on July 4th, 1831. In October 1860, Abraham Lincoln received a letter from an 11-year-old girl named Grace Petal from Westfield, New York. In the letter it said, If you ever let your whiskers grow, I will try to get my brothers to vote for you. You look a great deal better for your face is so thin. All the ladies like whiskers and they would tease their husbands to vote for you and then you would be president. Lincoln made no promises, but he did write back saying, having never worn any whiskers, do you not think people would call it a piece of silly affection if I were to begin? Less than a month later, Lincoln had a full beard. He went on to become the 16th president of the United States. And on February 16th, 1861, Lincoln arrived by train to the town of Westfield, New York, on his way to the White House. Normally, he would have passed through a small community like this with the same briefness of others of its size. But Westfield was home to Grace Bell. Lincoln must have anticipated that Grace was in that Westfield crowd somewhere. He told the audience that day to go get her. He called out for her. He pronounced to everybody, I received a letter from a young lady here. It was a very pretty letter, and she advised me to let my whiskers grow, as it would improve my personal appearance, acting partly upon her suggestion I have done so. And now, if she is here, I would like to see her. A small boy mounted on a post, with his mouth and eyes wide open, cried out, There she is, there she is, Mr. Lincoln, pointing to a beautiful young girl dark eyes, who was blushing all over her face. The president left the car, 
and the crowd made way for him. When he reached her, he gave her several hearty kisses, and amid the yells of delight from the excited crowd, he bade her goodbye. In 1889, President William Harrison gave the longest ever inaugural address by a U.S. president. It was 8,445 words long. It took two hours to deliver, and it was also a terribly cold and blustery year. Thirty-two days later, he died from pneumonia, which he developed while delivering his two-hour address outdoors in the elements. Did you know that President Ronald Reagan worked for a construction contractor and dug ditches ten hours a day, six days a week? For that job, he was paid 35 cents an hour, and he used the money that he saved from his work to pay for his college tuition. He was a member of the college's gridiron football team, the captain of the college swim team, and thanks to his acting skills, a highly valued member of the college theater group. In addition, he played an active role in the campus politics. Although an indifferent student, all these various activities earned him immense popularity, and he was elected student body president in his senior year. In 1937, following a successful screen test, he signed a contract with Warner Brothers Studios and moved to California. For the first few years, he appeared mostly in a series of B-movies where he was almost always cast as the unmistakable good guy. Affable, sincere, easygoing. In fact, not too different from how Reagan himself was in real life. His first notable role came in the film Newt Rockney, All-American. In the film, Reagan portrays a football player named George, the Gipper. The film became a hit, yet another nickname came to get stuck with Ronald Reagan, forever known as The Gipper. Reagan's film career spanned almost three decades, during which he appeared in 53 different films. These are Interesting Things with J.C.